just a fault bigger. Um, yeah. Yes. Now we are. I don't want to do that yet, though. Because there'll be a loot. We'll be here in an echo. Speaking of. Oh, yeah. Be hearing us talking now. Who knows? I don't know if I'm going to get that or me, but. Good morning. Let's all stand as we sing our first song, Everything That Has Breath. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. And mercy fall on me. 
Everyone needs forgiveness, kindness of the Savior, the hope of nations. And Savior, you can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. surrender. Oh 
attitude to that song as we pray, Lord. You're the one who made us, made us just the way we are, made us just the way you want us to be. Everything about us is uh, planned by you. We confess to you that uh, we get a little arrogant sometimes. We want to take matters into our own hands, take our lives into our own hands, make our plans without consulting you. And then we come to church and we sing, I surrender. And at the time, we might actually convince ourselves that we mean those words, but then we walk out of church and sometimes we just don't think like that, act like that, or talk like that. For that, we ask your forgiveness. And we ask that you'd give us a new determination and resolve to live lives that are surrendered to you. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Big people have a seat, little people come on down. <clears throat> How are you today? You are good? Hey, you guys almost got matching coats, it looks like. Wow, that's pretty cool. And matching pants, sort of. No, you don't? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm old. My eyes are feeble. How are you? You know what that is? What is that? That's a chair. What's it for? Sitting in it, okay. Have you ever sat in this chair? No. Yeah. You, you sat in this chair? Yeah. No, I don't think you have. Here comes Charles. Charles, have you ever sat in this chair? No, I don't think so. Do you think, do you think it would hold you if you sat in it? Yeah, would it, would it fall apart? If you sat in that chair, would it, would it fall down? Would, do you think it would last? Would it hold you up? Probably. You think it would hold me? You do? You think I should try it? Yeah? What if, what if it falls apart and breaks? What if I fall down? Tell you what, does this make any sense at all if I said to you, I believe that that chair will hold me, but I'm not going to sit in it. No, that doesn't make any sense because I don't really believe it, do I? Unless I try it. Okay, <clears throat> are you ready? Would any of you want to get underneath the chair when I sit on it just in case it breaks and falls to, so you could catch me? You don't want... You believe the chair will hold me, but you don't want to get under there just in case it breaks. Anybody? You would? You would? Okay, how about if you do this? Just, stick your, just sit down and stick your leg under there. All right, stick your leg under there. Okay, all right, are you ready? Now, if the chair breaks, you're going to get a broken foot, okay? Do you know how much I weigh? You want to guess? You want to guess? And about how many people think I weigh 500 pounds, 400 pounds, 300 pounds, 200 pounds? I weigh the exact same amount that Jerome Bettis weighed when he played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know how much that is? Two, two, one. Okay, two hundred twenty-one. He was built a little different than me, but and he was a little taller. But okay, are you ready? Are you scared? Are you gonna pull your foot out? Are you sure? Are you good? Let's have a round of applause. Thank you. Go ahead. You can have a seat. Do you know what this is called when you do something like this? This is called faith. That's when you believe in something and you actually prove it. And that's what God wants us to do with him, to have faith in him and believe him and give him a try, okay? It did not broke, no, it did not broke. Here you go, sweetie. Let's say a prayer and then you can go downstairs, okay? Ready? Let's say a prayer. Thank you, Lord, that when we put our faith in you, you never disappoint us. Amen. Okay, and go right down the middle aisle with Miss Mary. Right over that way. Well, everybody else looks at the screen.
Tomorrow night is uh, our usual Monday Night Biker Church from 7 to 7.30, and in addition to the uh, Monday Night Biker Church, we are having the Chili Soup Stew Cook-Off, which is a fundraiser for the Christmas bag. Bring your chili soup or stew. Please have it here by 6 o'clock, and voting and tasting will go on right through church until 8 p.m. People will vote with their dollars. And whoever gets the most votes or most dollars gets to keep all that money that is in the bag. And uh, the rest of it goes to the Christmas bag. The official board meeting is Thursday night at 6, if that applies to you. We hope to see you there. And February 23rd here at TFMC is our ladies' meeting from 11 to 1, Fashioning Women for Christ. That is next Saturday, actually. And just to give you a heads up for your planning, Ash Wednesday is March 6th, and we have service at 7 p.m. And Lenten Bible study will go on through Lent on uh, Wednesdays uh, at 7 p.m. And we will use the previous week's sermon as a guide for our Bible study, which is going to be about prayer. And for those of you that don't want to put money in the plate or write a check, you give the Easy Tide app on your phone or on our website. Thank you for those of you who do that. All right. What's the best thing about Valentine's Day? What? It's over with. It's over with. <laughs> <laughs> best thing about Valentine's Day is chocolate goes on sale half price the day after. Right? Mary and I have been married be 41 years this year, you know, so you know, things that you do when you're young, you don't do the same thing as when you got 40, over 40 years in together, and so uh, it used to be, you know, candy and flowers and things, and, and this year, she, she came to me, and she said, uh, I just want you to know, I don't, I don't want any flowers or candy for Valentine's Day. Okay, what do you want? She said, I need new Bill's socks. <laughs> Amazon.com, smile Amazon.com, so I went on there and ordered her a couple pairs of Bill socks, and if you do the smile thing and search our church uh, without costing you any more money, a little bit of the money uh, that you spend goes to the Christmas bag, so that's what I did, and uh, they arrived yesterday, a little bit late, but exactly what she wanted, so... So I have a question for you. Uh, we've been going through 1 Corinthians 13 the last few weeks. We're going to finish it up uh, today. What makes you feel loved? Think about that for a minute. What makes you feel loved? How do you know when somebody loves you? Okay, while you're thinking about that, we're going to read through uh, verses 8 to 13 of 1 Corinthians 13. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see, but a poor reflection is in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So when I ask the question, what makes you feel loved, uh, answers will be different. Uh, first of all, your answer will be different if you're a man or a woman. Your answer will be different by, based upon your age. Uh, children answer one way, teens another way, and I think even as you get to be an adult, uh, when you're in your 20s and 30s, what makes you feel loved is going to be different than when you're in your 60s. The last couple of weeks, we've, uh, as I said, been in 1 Corinthians 13, and uh, we've talked about uh, aspects of love. Uh, one way that you can show somebody, or the one way that God shows us that he loves us, is he's patient with us. That's one way I show that I love my wife, or my children, my grandchildren. I'm, I'm patient with them. Kindness, trust, hope. Those are just a few of the ways 
that love is shown. You know, you can't, you can't really love somebody and not trust them, right? I love you, but I just don't trust you. That doesn't work. Those two things cannot go together. God gives us all of those things. He loves us, but he's also patient with us. He's kind. He trusts us. He has hope for us. He offers those things to us. And we've also seen that uh, love is above gifts that are mentioned in 1 Corinthians 13, and love is above knowledge, and love is above faith. It's more important. You would say it's supreme above all of those things. But why do you suppose God measures our lives according to the way we love and how we love? Why this standard over any other? Why not faith? Doesn't it make a lot of sense that uh, God would measure our lives by how much faith we have? I mean, in Hebrews 11, it says, without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Yet He uses love above faith as a measurement of our lives. Why not sacrifice? I mean, my goodness, down through the years in Christianity, there are people who have given up their lives, some of them in absolutely horrible ways. But if you remember from last week, he says, even if I give my body, one of the versions says, even if I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it doesn't matter. So why do you suppose God uses love? Why not spiritual gifts? I mean, my goodness, the spiritual gifts that can be used to to bring other people to Jesus and to glorify him and honor him. But he says, no. Love is the main thing I'm going to use to measure your life. And he gives a reason. These other things are temporary. Spiritual gifts are temporary. Love is permanent. He compares love, which never fails, with prophecy, tongues, and knowledge. And he says, all these things will pass away. They're all temporary. They're not going to be around after this life anymore. Now, Again, as I talked about the last couple weeks, the Corinthians overvalued these other things. They overvalued prophecy and tongues and knowledge, and they were lacking in love. Prophecy and tongues and knowledge were all supernatural gifts from God. But he says, without love, these things are useless. They're all temporary. Love will never end. These will. And they're also partial They're not complete, but he says love is complete. It's his complete, his love is complete for us, and his expectation is, and this is where things get difficult, is that our love for him and for others also be complete. And I got to admit to you, wow, I need help with this. I have not attained yet the kind of love that I ought to have for God and I ought to have for others. I need help. And I'm going to tell you this, you probably already know it, you're probably already thinking it as I say it, you're sitting there thinking, yeah, you know what, me too. Me too. We all need that help. None of us loves as we should. But just because we fall short is no reason to give up trying. You know, that's, uh, I, I, I've heard that a lot over the last 40 plus years of people who are trying to live for the Lord and they might fail somewhere, uh, they might mess up, and they'll say, oh, well, I might as well just quit, I might as well just give up. Why? Why quit? Why give up? Why not confess and receive forgiveness and make things right and move on and keep trying and keep working towards what He wants you to be? That's what He wants us to do. Our goal Our aim, our quest, should be to love as Jesus loves us. Love God and love others. And as we mature spiritually, we'll get closer to that. Now, children, he talks about uh, when I was a child, I acted, you know, I thought like when I became a man, I gave up childish things. Speaking about children, you know, children are immature, right? They're immature, obviously, physically. They're immature mentally. They're immature emotionally. We try to teach them to share, and we try to teach them to think of others. We try to help them mature, right? We don't say to them, you know what, 
you were really immature the other day, so I give up on you. I'm not going to try to help you anymore. We don't do that. And God doesn't do that with us. When we fail, when out of our spiritual immaturity, we do something we shouldn't do or don't do something we should do or we mess up someone, he doesn't say, that's it, I'm giving up on you. Uh, Tuesday, Tuesdays are my day to be school bus for my four grandchildren who all attend St. John Lutheran School. Okay, on Tuesdays, I'm out at the school and I wait in the lobby as Julian and Jaron, who are in preschool, they come down and then we have a 15 minute wait till Ashen and Payson come down and then we all get in my truck and <clears throat> Sometimes we go various places, especially when the weather's nice for a little bit, uh, but it's my job to get them home. And this past Tuesday, I said to them, let's go to the store and buy something for Grandma for Valentine's Day. Now, she had told me she did not want any candy from me, but she did not tell me she did not want any candy from the grandchildren. And so we went to Walgreens uh, up there on Payne Avenue, okay, by Bishop Gibbons. And I had Ashlyn, who's nine, and Payson, who's six, and Julian, who's four, and Jaron, who's three. First of all, <laughs> I don't want to take the four of them into a store very often, okay? No, no, we're going down this aisle, over here, over here, over, come here, over here, okay? So anyway, we got into the car dial, and we're looking at some cards, and uh, <clears throat> I was shocked that there, were no, there wasn't a single card that said, Happy Valentine's Day, Grandma. I mean, there wasn't even a section for them, and nothing for Happy Valentine's Day, Grandpa. Okay, I wasn't looking for one for me, but there, there just wasn't any. There was, you know, everything else you could have met. So anyway, um, as I'm trying to keep them kind of you know, they just, they all recognize the letter G. So even the little ones that can't read, I said, just look for the letter G, okay? So we ended up buying, uh, we found a card, but all of a sudden I heard this. Look at this! And I turned my head and I could see the boys just going right around the corner. And I went around and there was a whole display of cars and trucks. Grandpa, can we have a car? Can we have a truck? I said, no, we're here to get something for Grandma. Next thing I know, it, it, so it was just one thing after another of can we have this except for Ashland. This is my point I'm making on maturity. Before I said anything, she said, boys, we're not here to get something for us. We're here to get something for Grandma. Now, I have to tell you, in one way, I was not at all surprised because I've seen stuff like this from her before. But here's for the, the difference between 9, 6, 4, and 3. Already, the maturity level was, we're, not here, we're, here, we're here for Grandma. We're not here for ourselves. I wasn't mad at a 3-year-old for wanting a truck when they're looking for something for Grandma, or a 4-year-old, or even a 6-year-old. Okay, when, when I told the boys, no, we're not getting any cars or trucks, Payson did this. Okay. Julian did this. But Grandpa, I want one. I want one. Talk to Mommy and Daddy about that. And Jaron did this. <laughs> what do you expect? What do you expect? Now think about that in relation to when you ask God for something and he says no. What is your reaction? Okay. Or, <laughs> that'll be an indication to your maturity level. Right? Mature people can accept no for an answer. The thing is, there are some people who never grow up spiritually and they never grow up emotionally. They're like children forever. How many of you ever bought Carter's clothes? Carter's? Okay, do you remember the theme behind Carter's? 
if they could just stay little till their carters grow out. My nie oldest niece wore a pair of Holly, Holly Hobby feety pajamas. Her little sister wore them. Aaron wore them. Jonathan wore them. And Mary Beth wore them. Five kids, and the feety part still was not worn out. <laughs> There's a 10-year difference between Melissa, who wore them first, and Mary Beth, who wore them last. We think that in our mind, right? If they could just stay little till their carters wear out, but we don't really want our kids to stay immature. We don't really want them to stay little. What we really want, and our goal as parents, is for them to grow up, right? Become mature adults, become contributing members of society, become people who love and serve the Lord, and move out, <laughs> right? And have their own place that you can go and visit. And they can fix dinner for you, right? That's what we want. And God wants the same thing for us. He wants us to grow up. He wants us to mature. It's not realistic to think about your children staying little till their carters wear out. I used to read a story to my kids, and I've seen it, and uh, had a chance to read it to my grandchildren. And uh, part of one of the lines in the story is, I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always, as long as you're living, my baby you'll be. And it ends up, the mother singing that to the baby, and then when the mother gets old and feeble, the, uh, her son is holding her and singing that. We want our children to grow up, and God wants us to grow up. Spiritual gifts, the ones I mentioned before, they're temporary, and they should lead to spiritual maturity. They're partial, like a poor reflection. Now, I found it interesting that Paul used that because the Corinthians were famous for their bronze mirrors. You know, they had really good way of polishing bronze in order uh, to make mirrors out of them, but even those could not reveal everything. Paul says that love is going to be a measure of our life because it's supreme over everything. These three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. In Hebrews 1 and 6, it says, Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. We're saved through faith. We're justified through faith. The Bible tells us that the righteous live by faith, and faith is important, but not as important as love. Hope is also essential to the Christian life. We have the hope of salvation, the hope of the resurrection, the hope of Jesus' return, but love is more important than hope. Faith and hope are only for this life. God's love lasts forever. So I'll close by asking you this. Have you accepted his love? Most important. But secondly, does it show? Is it obvious that you love God and that you love others. Let's pray. The greatest of these is love. Lord, we all fall short, but I'm not going to stop trying. I've been on a quest for spiritual maturity and living and loving the way you want me to. For 46 years, 47 years, 47 years, and not yet, like Paul, I have not yet attained. But I'm not giving up. My prayer is that nobody, none of us will. Amen. Receive our offering and sing our last song. all stands we sing our last song the only name
turn on me tell you the end of the story. How many of you, by raising your hand, think I ended up buying the cars and the trucks for the boys? Wow, none of you? Well, you raise your hand? Oh, you're right, I didn't. Let me tell you what did happen, though. We got over into the candy aisle because, like I said, Grandma did not say the grandchildren couldn't buy her candy, and, and, uh, Payson was the first one to notice. He said, look, there's a heart, because you know Mary likes peanut butter cups. There's a heart with peanut butter in it, Grandpa. I said, so we got that. Can I have a pack of gum? <laughs> sure. Julian, can I have Tic Tacs? Yep. Jaren, there's nothing here that I like. Ashen walked down the end of the aisle, grabbed a Kinder Egg. If you don't know what those are, they're little candy things with a some kind of toy. Here, Jaron, you like these. 
took that. So yeah, we can do that. Ashlyn, do you want something? Nope. We didn't come here for me. I tell you that story, and I included it to ask you this. Is it evident that you're maturing in Christ? It's evident to me that she's maturing emotionally. Is it evident that you're maturing spiritually? I hope it is. God bless. Stay for Sunday school. We have a Bible study for adults, Sunday school for everybody else. I wake up in the love of